Very nice. Um, so uh, t tell us a little bit about who is Brianna? Is she, uh, I assume, is she a Republican or Democrat? I'm seeing blue here. Uh, she's a progressive Democrat. Progressive Democrat. Yeah. Uh, she and I are both from the, the Bernie side of the party. Um, she was a delegate through that process two years ago, 2016 Bernie delegate in Jeffco. Um, uh, so Brianna uh, grew up in rural upstate New York uh, in a small town uh, called Milton. It's apple farming uh, country, you know, here in New York, the Big Apple, well, that's why. And, uh, you know, she had, a, she had a really good upbringing and, you know, was motivated by, you know, her parents to serve her community and became a junior firefighter at the age of 16. Wow. And, uh, and, and uh, you know, all you have out there is volunteer firefighter departments. In rural so, area. Right, yeah. exactly. So, um, so she's, she did that for, uh, for a total of seven years, you know, while she was going to college. Um, got degrees in geology and physics, got a master's degree in geochemistry, um, something called aqueous, aqueous hydrogeochemistry. I always forget. Sounds it's like fracking. Clo close enough. Well, it, she did use that to uh, work with the hard rock mining industry, not oil and gas. Um, and she had a career that took her around the world as an environmental consultant in different countries working with hard rock mining sites. Um, doing most of the remediation, but also, you know, proper, proper extraction and advising, you know, how this, how this stuff works, mm -hmm. you know, in terms of water transport of minerals underground. And, uh, you know, so that, that required, uh, some fairly intense working with people who spoke other languages and had vastly different cultures. Mm -hmm. And that was, you know, where she really learned how to quickly, you know, gain people's trust uh, work with other people, accomplish goals on deadline and in outdoor difficult, you know, conditions. Mm -hmm. And that also gave her a, uh, you know, a global perspective in terms of how, how people relate to each other mm -hmm. and, uh, and also how people relate to their natural world. So, uh, she did that for quite a while came to Colorado, uh, about 10 years ago and wanted to continue geology, but decided to change into uh, software and internet. Uh, and so she just completed her master's in software development at DU huh. um, in August while working and campaigning. Um, and she's, uh, you know, she's got the student debt pile from that one. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, she's in the same boat with a lot of people there. Um, and so, yeah, and that's, that uh, brings her to uh, today. She's also uh, a transgender woman who's early in her transition. Really? Yeah. Yes. I and, didn't even realize. And that makes her, you know, she would be a historic candidate if elected. Huh. She would be the first uh, elected to uh, state office and the first, and the first open uh, trans person elected in Colorado. Huh. It's interesting because in Arvada, um, the only other uh, trans woman ever to serve in Colorado office was on Arvada City Council, but she was closeted. She was outed in like I want to say nineteen ninety three. Closeted like Mrs. or like a what was that movie? Um, Mrs. Doubtfire. No, I was going to say Mrs. Doubtfire, but I mean um, with Dustin Hoffman in it. Uh, come on, it was like a oh, one, I know which one you're talking about. But like I'm saying, closeted like people didn't know that. Right. The, Just it was what? she. She. She was not public about her. her she presented nature. herself as a woman or as a man, and people didn't. Um. Know, or is a sorry I don't know. Well, just presented, means. presented, presented as a woman, right? Oh, but, okay. But did not did not reveal that she was transgender. Got it. Right. Got it. And so uh, it was it was she was outed. She was revealed uh, uh, against her desire, and she you know resigned from the council because sucks. in those days it was you know acceptance was a lot lower, understanding was a lot lower, yeah. and and uh, you know bigotry in Colorado was ascendant of course that was the year after amendment 2 passed you know that horrific anti lgbt discrimination amendment to the constitution that was you know later repealed but at that time it was huh. is very difficult you know 1992 90, was a was a, a a bad year for our constitution with tabor and amendment 2 right i saw that article probably about 8 o'clock last night and i went well that just makes her all the cooler but it was really stinking with this other council person it was a newspaper that called her and said look either you come out or we're going to write an article so she was just really you know pushed into it but, right um, right yeah no she was she was uh you know mistreated you could say yeah, abused right so. it's not right to do that to people yeah 
and you know it was her decision to uh, to to live that way because of legitimate you know fear of how she would be treated. And it's not that you know she served Arvada well, and it's just too bad that other people decided that right. that uh, that such a person uh, was not capable of serving, or should not, you know, worse, should not exist. We see this with the Trump administration's recent decree that that they essentially believe that there are no such thing as transgender people, and they want to erase them. Huh. And that was not the sole purpose, you know, for Brianna deciding to run, but it certainly. It certainly fuels her and every other such individual who does decide to run. And she's an extremely qualified, caring, and smart person. Any, you know, she mm-hmm. would be a great representative, uh, even if she was uh, cisgender. But the fact that there is still this level of hate and misunderstanding, and you know, these resultant attacks, right. it 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 makes it more significant if she can win because she can shine a light on people who are being marginalized who are not understood to say we exist and we are equal people and and we need to be understood and we will help you understand us but um you need to know that we are that we are real and we need to have this understanding so that we have true equality going forward is this this her first foray into politics um oh running for office yes i mean if we want to consider you know her first she was, you know, activated in, you know, 20, you know, 15, 2016 mm-hmm. and, you know, became a, became a volunteer at that point. Um, activated. I like that. Activated. Right. Well, you know, you, there's, a, there's a beginning point for everybody, right? Yeah. 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 I know Just what kind turned of, me into an turns activist. On, right. right. You know? Yeah. Um, but I noticed in that article too, she quoted that one in 1000 children were born with the extra chromosomes and, you know, things on a physical level. So it was mm-hmm. very disturbing to read that about Trump, you know, because these, this is a problem when I dealt with hurricane recovery that we had a lot. Well, I wouldn't say a lot. I had three patients Mm -hmm. like that, you know, that just because of an abnormality at birth, they had to choose which sex and it could have gone either way. And at that time without ultrasound, they couldn't really decide. So the parents were, okay, you check. You know, right. and later on find out that they made the wrong choice, mm-hmm. you know, and want to stigmatize that person for it. Right. You know, so anyway, that's just, I just think she's so courageous. Well, she's very, very courageous. I mean, because of the, because of the level of violent reaction that people can have to a transgender person, um, for her to put herself out there to run for office is, is an extreme act of courage. And, you know, it's just one of the reasons that I was excited to help her at first and then to work for her uh, after that, because, you know, you, you don't have to hang out with her very long to to gain a tremendous amount of respect and appreciation for who she is and what she's doing. Oh, yeah. And before, uh, you know, before this, I, I, w- I just want to note um, in terms of political activism prior to running for office, mm-hmm. uh, she, you know, went to the Capitol to testify because the Democrats have been trying to get bills against conversion therapy. Mm-hmm. through the legislature and uh you know they can pass the house but then you know the republicans have controlled the senate since uh 2014 and they have you know, signed these bills to the kill committee where they die right they just get yep. tabled forever into the, you, know all into the kill committee. You, you know all about that stuff yeah. mm-hmm. uh the kill committee um so she went and testified and saw this happening over and over again that that the bills were not getting get through the republican senate committee and so she decided all right well if this isn't working, I'm going to try this other way. And so she and other activists went to city councils. They started with Westminster, and they got those city councils to issue proclamations against conversion therapy. I mean, this is so not conversion. Th- is that where they kidnap you and they, or they, is that? Tell me about not, conversion. Therapy. Maybe not technically kidnapping, but it's it's. You go to a camp and you come out not gay. Yeah, well, the, the, it's is it's that, for it's yeah. for parents to yeah. send their children to to a camp or a center or a facility where they're essentially abused, right? Yeah. They're essentially uh, su- subjected to treatments uh, to try to convert them back to, um, you know, a, a heterosexual normative model. And and it's not right. It is abuse because the, the child has this in- interior experience that says, this is who I really am and I'm trying to figure that out. and. I mean, it's it's tough for kids in general to figure out who they are, but for for parents to react in this way and to send them to these these you know programs for supposed therapy that are they're anything but 
um, is is a form of abuse. Mm -hmm. And so it's a very you know big cause in the LGBTQ plus community to uh, to make these practices uh, prohibited or illegal. You know whatever they can do. And so going to the city councils to issue proclamations against it, it doesn't have the the, the binding force of state law, but it's it's a step. And so they got it uh, accomplished in Westminster, uh, Wheat Ridge, Denver, and um, Edgewater. What uh, obviously we're going to want to talk about cannabis because that's a my Naturally. that's my. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Life got so much simpler for me once I realized that, um, you know, I could go fight for this one thing and uh, turn myself into a single issue type of person. But I, um, yeah, I think it's good for the planet. But uh, what, so what, what is her, what are her main like platform issues that, um, that like, what is, is it, are there yeah, particular yeah, things that I get she's it, yeah. the, the, the main reason she's she inspired to, on to for, accomplish so um, in Jefferson County education has been a big deal you uh -huh. may remember the recall in 2015 after some you know tea partiers kind of took over and wanted to roll back a lot of standards yeah. that we would consider mm -hmm. fairly foundational um, so uh, she has experience as a teaching assistant and uh, she really stands with our public school teachers and with our public schools and it's not that there isn't a place for charters, but the charters are being used as a method of attacking um, highly qualified teachers in teacher unions, attacking strong neighborhood schools, uh, because there are ways to abuse the charter model to skim money off the top. And Brianna's not in favor of that <laughs> and, uh, you know, wants accountability and, you know, charters should, you know, they should exist to handle the needs of kids who don't do well in a traditional uh, school model, mm -hmm. um, but but those teachers should still be hired, you know, with with very high standards. They should be compensated well, and they should have, you know, they should have rights, you know, in terms of uh, in terms of bargaining and not being, um, not being let go if they, you know, refuse to teach, you know, a certain kind of thing. I mean, there's there's it's a complicated issue. I refuse to teach the flat Earth. Yeah, the good. I'm not gonna. Good. I'm think, not gonna teach flat Earth think, if I'm a teacher. I think we should all be on board with that. I need to just agree on certain things so public education is is uh is her big deal like we have a teacher crisis we have a shortage um we've got to pay teachers more we've got to invest more in the school buildings themselves because for kids uh you know education at an early age is critically important if you don't get a good nurturing education early you're going to be lagging behind the rest of your life and so uh early childhood education um with a really good neighborhood school and and uh, well-paid, supported teachers who mm -hmm. who are able to stay in their jobs and aren't you know shoved out by the rising cost of living. Yeah. that's that's a big deal. Um, because of her uh, scientific background, strong environmental policy that's rooted in science before profit motives that seek to undermine and weaken those environmental uh, policies. Right. Uh, that's also really important. Um, just general general low uh wages i mean we've got a lot of issues that that are very complicated to solve like affordable housing mm -hmm. um very complex you know interweaving with the state uh, uh local government and market forces um health care a lot of that stuff is federal we can do things to address health care costs uh locally if if you know we have progressives you know controlling the branches of government um, we'll be able to get through, you know, an anti-pharmaceutical price gouging bill, which we could not do because of the Republicans this last time around. Um, but one thing that will help with will help everybody is if we are able to push wages up, if we are able to take on Tabor to pass a progressive income tax, so that we are in, you know, we are incentivizing businesses to drive their to drive wages up. If we're able to allow local governments to pass their own higher minimum wages, that's currently that's prohibited in Colorado. Wait, um, do what? Well, like a couple years ago, Seattle passed a fifteen dollar minimum wage, right. right? So Washington state government allowed the city of Seattle to do that. In Colorado, that is prohibited. Oh, okay. Cities are and counties are not allowed. Um, I don't know if counties can even do it, but cities for sure are not allowed to pass their own higher local minimum wage. And that would make a lot of sense because even though we passed a, 
a twelve dollar phase in you know wage increase across the state that's good, but there are still vast differences in the cost of living between you know central Denver and rural counties, yeah. and so you know the the wage should reflect you know a, 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 it should be tied to a local cost of living because it doesn't make sense for rural counties to have to pay uh, a, you know a, a wage equivalent to to a Denver wage. Um, the best way of handling that is allowing cities to pass wages that help address the cost of living where they are. You know, this helps in mountain communities too. How many people who who work in the, yeah. the ski industry and the service industry in the mountains yeah. can't afford to live there? Um, you know, being able to, you know, having this be an option would give a lot of those uh, workers the ability to live somewhat close to where they work so they don't have ridiculous commutes that are an additional, you know, cost of living for them. Uh, so that that's a key issue. Um, and then just the last thing um, uh, before we get to the, the cannabis, uh, because of her um, knowledge of software and internet, uh, she wants to push for municipal broadband, and which would enfold um, an embrace of net neutrality. So that one, I mean, a lot of rural Colorado doesn't have good or any broadband access still. Mm-hmm. And so people, people in outlying weird? counties are crazy? still like stuck mm-hmm. in, yeah. you know, in dial up or satellite or, you know, low quality internet. And that's not... That's not great because, I mean, the modern world really expects you to have internet access. Mm -hmm. And it's just another way that rural Coloradans get left behind because we haven't built out that infrastructure and because we're trying to rely on, you know, Comcast or CenturyLink to get out there. Uh, No, I mean, we should, it, it, internet ought to be a public utility. It'd be, it'd be far better if it was. And so any, to any extent to which we can move in that direction. And Longmont has done a little bit of this already. Uh, so that's something she wants to uh, push for, and she has uh, a lot of uh, acquired knowledge and expertise to get there. Did we? We just had a thing? glitch, but the last time this happened, it's happened once, and the last time it happened, um, it turned out that just because that browser crashed did not mean that um, we were done. Hmm. So right. we're going to keep going with that, and uh, also I'm recording it, so if we need to rebroadcast, we can. Not sure. Maybe I'm getting some more love from Facebook. There. Can oh, yeah. any, uh, if anybody, give me a thumbs up? Up there, right? There, a little further down. There we are. There we are. Yeah. All right. Yay! Yeah. Look at us. We got two yeah. watchers. Nice. <laughs> Appreciate you. It adds up, though. It adds up. It'll <laughs> we go had a, within it, like what, mm-hmm. and 24 hours, it'll uh-huh. be up to like 6,000. Yeah. And yep. if you look at the logarithms, majority of it is Colorado. We have mm-hmm. like 10 percent outside right yeah it's mostly lot. colorado folks cool. mostly industry folks mm-hmm. and yeah um you know that's a good thing if you mm-hmm. want to talk to the cannabis community yeah so we got an opportunity well, real quick you're talking about the the kill committee and i would just like to say that uh phil kelly's opponent is the head of the kill committee mm-hmm. and um we need to get rid of that guy so go vote for phil kelly in senate district 13 in Weld county um, he's been on this, he's been here twice and, uh, man, I just want people like that to represent me and, uh, well, not, not so much that I want to move to Weld County though, because <laughs> <laughs> all the nonsense smells like fracking. Yeah, it um, does. But, uh, so on, uh, on cannabis, I've got this statement here. Do you have this memorized? <laughs> uh, no, yeah. no, we wrote it. We wrote it last night. I mean, it's just. It's just the way of writing down, you know, what we already believe. It's all very common sense and obvious. Yeah. Um, so this says, this is um, the official statement on from Brianna Titone for uh, Colorado House District 27 in Central and West Arvada. Uh, says that the people voted to legalize cannabis and I fully support the complete legal right and ability to cultivate cannabis and hemp for all uses. THC is not a dangerous substance when compared to alcohol and nicotine. I would add it's not dangerous compared to water either, I guess. <laughs> um, and with regulation, it is safe to use. It, uh, its medicinal applications are expanding by the day as more research is legally performed. Local control over the cannabis industry is in the spirit of how we do things here in Colorado. 
Hemp is incredibly useful and can solve multiple problems. As a sustainable crop with many uses, it is a critical economic boon for rural Colorado's agricultural communities struggling with commodity prices and declining water supplies. I look forward to new innovations and jobs in Colorado in the blossoming hemp industry. So I'm down with that. Yeah. Um, that's, uh, that's what we fight for. Yeah. We want to free the plant and we, we need to have as many people who understand that they lied to us about cannabis and um not only was it it was the opposite of the truth that they told me in junior high at least turns out it's not bad for you it's it's saving people's lives in many cases um so uh yeah that's we support our pro cannabis candidates and well we need to do something uh we were asked to do why we support little video for phil kelly and I've been thinking about what I'm going to say and why I would support Brianna. But, you know, I've been an advocate for a long time. And, you know, you always look for that senator or, you know, person that's in that seat that's going to be on your side. Yeah. What's even better is to have one of your own. Mm -hmm. And that's what we have with Phil Kelly is mm -hmm. we have a cannabis patient, you mm -hmm. know. And so when you have one of your own in there, that kind of gets you a little stronger. Yeah. You know, I'll tell you a politician who I um, who I really respect uh, is Jonathan Singer. Mm -hmm. and, and he couldn't be here today, too. Um, he's I don't know. Is he is he running for reelection this year? Mm -hmm. He's not my district, yep. but I yep. every because he's in the house. Every oh, in the house. Yep. Okay. house. Um, but yeah, we need just more people who just decent folk to go represent us and, you know, help people i'm so i'm ever we're all jaded we're all jaded this is all wearing us all out and we're uh you know we're gonna have to turn a corner someday it's not gonna be this election season though so mm -hmm. um but yeah we it'd be nice to have some more people like um like Brianna, and, we're and, we're totally getting it. I mean, I met Singer during Bernie, you know, a couple mm -hmm. years ago, and he quickly became one of my favorite people. And I found out I had a mutual friend with him from outside of politics yeah. too. So, nice. and he's he's helped Brianna a lot, um, Good. and he's definitely going to be one of her, uh, you know, role models. Okay. Um, they they assign uh, they assign mentors right to the freshman representatives. So if Brianna wins, you know, she'll get. We don't know who, who her mentor will be, but it'd be awesome if it was Singer. Yeah. He is such a force for us in the cannabis community. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, he comes to our meetings. He's there at the Capitol with I've us. I've seen him speak at two memorial services yeah, now. Two, yeah. uh, uh, for, uh, first for uh, Jack, for Jack yeah. and then for Nana, mm -hmm. which was here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We had a service here and um, came in and spoke. Mm -hmm. But awesome, yeah, awesome, he's, man. he fights for... He fights for patience, and that's who we fight for. And right. we, you know, I mean, just totally upfront about it. I, I want to put pro cannabis candidates in the Colorado. Yeah, I should probably shout out to a couple friends, uh, uh, Terry Robinette and Greg. Yeah. Yay! Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Yeah, I, I love think, Terry I think and Greg. Greg is how I know you. Um, oh, yeah. I think he probably, like, mutual friended us on Facebook or something. Uh, they're so they inspiring were, to me. They're, they're, they were my precinct neighbors in Adams County really? before they moved down to uh, the Springs. Yeah. Um, nice. But, yeah, I used to I used to hang out with them for breakfast, and we need to do it again if you're watching. Oh, they will. Like, come back up after the election. Um, yeah, they're uh, they're great people, and I learned a lot of what I know about, you know, uh, cannabis from uh, from them. Well, they have a lot to tell people about cannabis mm -hmm. there. Um, yeah. Yes, they do. Yeah, that's, uh, they're very strong activists and just wonderful people. Wonderful people. I met them at the Capitol. Mm -hmm. um, but what was important to me, to, you know, to let people know too is um, I got Brianna, her in application to be endorsed by Normal, mm -hmm. and it's all sent out. She's got it from the state. But, you know, she reached out to us. You know, she came to one of our meetings, and that sells a lot. That's you know, New Volution. At, to New Volutions, mm -hmm. yes. Which we strongly support as well. Yes, we, we do. And uh, we, that was just so happened to be the night we had Cindy Sovine and Phil Kelly speaking. Mm -hmm. You know, but the fact that she walked in the door and found us, you mm -hmm. know, so we just, you know, of course, took her in. 
welcomed her full heartedly and so hoping that she sticks around after she's elected she has to still keep coming to our meetings oh you bet you bet she will <laughs> i mean it's um it's an important issue there's so many but mm -hmm. but this is this is something that's lifting colorado up this is a new growing important part of colorado and so while it may not always get the same attention that healthcare, transportation, and the environment get, it's it's significant and it's just rising all the time, and it's mm -hmm. going to play uh, an ever increasing role in in Colorado's future. And especially, you know, as, assuming that we are able to carry off our wins, if we elect Jared Polis, who's been strongly pro cannabis mm -hmm. and pro hemp, um, and that we we are able to elect more uh, progressives who are, you know, not just okay and tolerant of the industry, but active supporters and interested in learning more about it and interested in doing more to help it grow, mm -hmm. um, then, then I think it's going to be, I think it's going to be a great thing. Right. Do you know any, uh, have, do you have any opinions on amendment X? Um, amendment X would remove the definition <laughs> of hemp from the Colorado state constitution. Mm -hmm. It was a pass with uh, hemp was put in the Constitution with the passing of Amendment 64, and this year uh, it is proposed with Amendment X that they remove it and put it in the hands of the legislature. And um, our experience uh, was it last year or this year with 1220? It was 12, it was last year. Last year. 1220 and 1221 is um, which, which limited the plant counts for home grows um, are the reasons why um, many people, myself included, distrust the, well, yeah, the legislature to make decisions about um, what the definition of hemp is. So, sorry, you kind of broke our trust on that, and I'm voting no on X. Um, do you have any thoughts on that? You, I don't expect you to be fully into cannabis, but that's, I'm just telling you guys, that's, yeah. I'm voting well, no on X. Mm -hmm. I, uh, I I looked at it because it was on the ballot, mm -hmm. and um, I you know I needed to go a certain way on it. Um, it definitely seems like one that has the most the most of a division, right? On in terms of people who are for uh, and against. Huge. Um, I I leaned uh, I leaned for and ended up voting for it uh, because of my friendship with Jonathan Singer, um, Samantha Walsh. Uh, you know, Michael Bowman, who I don't know too well, but you know who I've been following in terms of growing the hemp industry. Um, there is a risk with taking it out of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. um, I do agree with that. Um, I think I think the risk is minimal. Um, I don't know that hemp is going to be subject to the same deal that you saw with because that twelve twenty twelve twenty one were about cannabis, right? Mm -hmm. Specifically, yes, and and. But it's it's all the same plant. Hemp is cannabis sativa L with less right. than zero point three percent delta nine tetrahydrocannabinol by dry weight. Right. But what's the difference between like those kind of grows and like field cultivation? It, so, because I mean, you, in terms of field, I, I don't. And I'll confess, I don't yeah. know what the specifics are. But um, but you can't really regulate field cultivation like you can, you know, your own personal grows, right? And it's not subject to the same. Correct. limits but the, but your the concern is that there would be the potential to restrict it um, yes the concern is that then monsanto or gw pharma could come into colorado and um i don't know bribe and blackmail a bunch of nefarious politicians or something and then get it lowered to say zero percent and then mm. lo and behold the only zero percent uh uh, cannabis sativa L seeds are from uh, Monsanto. Right. So um, you, yeah. yeah. So you're concerned the, about the possibility of a of of a mega industrial uh, takeover. Yes. Oh yeah. Um, right. Yeah. And more than my concern about removing it, it's my lack of understanding for of what the purpose is. It's 2018 now. The Colorado can vote in even numbered years, is my understanding, on to amend the Constitution for things unrelated to budget. Is mm -hmm. that correct? So there's it, it's it seems like they're trying to solve a problem that will um, only potentially exist for two years before we can readdress the issue. And during those two years, as as when the farm bill gets passed eventually the, at the federal level, 
Um, and all of these other states, Kansas and whatnot, well, Kansas are going to start growing hemp next year. But, you know, when everybody can start growing hemp, then the concern is that with this in our Constitution, that Colorado would be at a disadvantage if the federal government were to raise the THC level in industrial hemp from 0.3% to something more like, say, 1%. And I think that the odds of uh, they have they were supposed to pass the farm bill by September 30th, and now they postponed it till after the election. And I think, and that's with the 0.3 percent hemp in it. Mm -hmm. And I think the odds of our federal government saying, you know what, we're gonna hemp's not only okay now, we're gonna raise the THC level in it. I, I just don't see it happening, and so I see it as a as a solution to a. a to a problem that's not we're not going to face and the potential for it to hurt patients um because hemp has i mean the, it's the same plant hemp just has less than 0.3 percent thc in it there's at least a, another 112 known phytocannabinoids in cannabis species and um you know we're taking advantage of of just one of them here in the cbd industry but we're gonna watch when these cbg and cbc and cbn products start coming out um, all could be, you know, they're all in hemp too. Um, but, uh, so a lot of patients could be harmed by this who currently have the ability to, you know, put in for a permit and grow their own medicine for, for hemp an agricultural commodity hemp. Um, so I could see that that hurts patients, but mostly I just don't understand the logic of, I don't think it's gonna, I don't think it's gonna happen. I, I don't think that the federal, and if it does happen, then maybe we can have some some uh, representatives at, at the state level who will do something reasonable about it and somehow make the world not fall apart. If like, um, but yeah, I I was for it until I um, I was for it initially, and uh, to the point where like my wife voted for it, but you know she's better about sending back mail-in ballots than I am. So I, I had time to change my mind and, and learn a little bit more. But I just don't see the purpose of it. Sorry to sidetrack this. No, I want to talk fine. about... And I, you know, I mean, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm I'm giving you my opinion and not yeah. not necessarily Brianna. Yeah. I mean, although it's it's similar. I mean, it was the same thing. Like we went, we went to, we looked at Singer's, you know, opinion on it. And, you know, of course, he's he in the legislature. Say? And when he's they for were, it. Yeah, because it's his legislature, they refer to it, right? I mean, it's all the ones that are letters come from the legislature. And it's in terms of let's let's solve, let's solve get ahead of this, you know, potential situation. And it sounds like your primary objection is just that we're doing this. We're maybe jumping the gun. We're being proactive and right. taking an, what I believe to be an unnecessary risk. Mm -hmm. um, I, I, I don't know. Right. I, d I honestly don't see that much risk of a backlash against hemp when even one of the worst people on the planet, Senator McConnell, is an advocate because yeah. he's trying. And now to do, Paul Ryan is. He's too. trying to do right. He's trying to do right by uh, by Kentucky farmers, and and I will give him credit for nothing else because he's horrible. But I will give him credit for that. And if even and if even he's on that, then I, I think this I think this train is moving in that one direction, and that means that that freeing freeing the standard from the constitutional stricture is is a, a good proactive step but maybe i mean maybe you will be right and maybe we won't needed we will not have needed to do this until two or four more years i don't know if there was something out there where if there was legislation on the on the table saying like if we vote yes on x this year then i expect somebody to raise the thc level in hemp next year or to put that or is it just i don't know i I'm just telling you, I don't see the logic in it. And I guess in that way, I'm, uh, if I don't know, then I like the way that it's going right now. We're in business. We're, we're growing an industry. We're, um, we're helping people. And I like the way that it is right now. And I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm just a little bit, uh, hesitant hesitant enough to vote mm -hmm. no on it but again I, all i'll be doing is canceling out my wife's vote because we had cindy sovine in here who i love and uh, truly respect and there are other people who on the other side of the issue who again i just love and respect and right um so 
it's it's interesting to uh to kind of have a dog in the fight but not really <laughs> know <laughs> Not really, no. But I just I think it's an unnecessary risk. Sorry to sidetrack no, that. No, but that's been I'm, obviously, it's like the isn't it like the key debate in the industry yeah. right now, oh, right? Because yeah. it's, yeah. it's on it's on the ballot now, and the vote and election day is Tuesday, so of yeah. course it's going to be on top of everyone's mind. So well, it, it is. I just wish it was not... Brian in the chair instead of me talking yeah. about it. <laughs> but well, the, she's welcome on. Yes, mm-hmm. she can come celebrate yeah, her uh, victory. Work. She's only able to take a you know one one day a week off of work, you know, to be able to pay her bills. Yeah. Right. And then right. she's going to have to take, you know, extra time next week because, hey, it's election day and she's got to get on those doors and wrap up those final, those final undecided voters. Yeah. Does, like, she hey, go not, does she go door to door? She does, you know, it's just um, because she, she has to work in an office four days a week. Yeah. Uh, and then that fifth, the fifth day off, I mean, there's, you, you have to jam everything else into that yeah. day, right? So, you know, dialing for donations and having meetings you know, uh, takes up the time, you know, just working on other, like being able to have a meeting with the full, you know, staff, you know, including Brianna. Mm-hmm. Um, and, and then, and then there's, you know, the door knock in the afternoon and early evening. And, uh, so she, she gets out there, you know, we spend all weekend, uh, on it and she does great at the doors. I mean, people really appreciate her and they have good conversations with her. So, Yeah. I, I mean, that's do it. for for uh, for that for that level race to candidate absolutely has to get out there because the candidate is magic, and you know the the candidate can have conversations that staff like myself cannot do right. Like I'm just I'm just a guy. Like who who am I to be at someone's door, you know, knocking and and telling them about about Brianna and asking for their vote uh, for her? But when it's her, I mean, she can get Republicans to vote for her. Yeah. you know, frequently mm-hmm. does, um, and you know. That, that's that's true of the other staff too. Like they're really good as well. We have two field organizers, Seth and Emma, who are awesome. And there's a lot of you know sentiment for Brianna from you know some of the some of the Republicans that we talk to out there. You know we're not going to get the we're not going to get the 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 Trump lovers. We're not going to get the the transphobes. Um, but there's a lot of people who are really really disillusioned uh, with and sick of the Republican Party. And even if they are Republicans, they, you know they're 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 good people. They're fiscal conservatives, and they they just you know are a little squishy about some democratic issues and values. But when they talk to the person, that stuff goes away. And when there's a personal connection, then you can say, well, you know, I usually vote Republican, but I'll vote for you. Mm-hmm. And you know, she's able to pull it off. So right, I vote all over the map. I do I, too. I voted for, yeah. It, it's it's I vote on the person. That's why I stay independent. Mm-hmm. But what's interesting, I've been watching the polls. You know, for a while it was like a blue wave, but then they started calling it the pink wave because so many women decided to run for office. And like we we're supporting Kansas. Um, the make it a green general. wave, America. Mm-hmm. Yeah, make it a green. Grow wave. some hemp in right. Kansas. Sarah Swain for Kansas Attorney General. So. We support her too. So, you know, it's interesting. But now looking at it, I was looking at it last night and it's like they're neck and neck. The numbers are so close. Mm -hmm. And it seems to me like it's going to be that independent that didn't pre, you know, send in the ballot is going to be the one that turns the tables, you know, because that's the only that they're not following the independents as much. Mm hmm. So I don't know your thoughts on that or well I mean independent voters you know technically unaffiliated voters are all over the place um, in Colorado they now tend to lean to the left side but it depends on where you are right um, it's it, uh, unaffiliated voters you know have a tendency to kind of mirror the character of where they live um, ours are you know thankfully um, you know still displaying kind of a kind of a left tilt. Um, which is good because we're down about a thousand ballots to Republicans as of as of last night. But again, you know, we're going to get some Republican votes. We don't know how those people voted. We just know they've returned a ballot. Um, so it's a very nerve wracking time yes. in a campaign where, you know, all we're trying to do is do voter outreach, um, and then we we look at night and see what the ballot returns are, and then we you know run counts and vote builder and look at and like oh we're trying to guess who who these people are, but we can't see anyone's ballot. We're not going to know any of that until. That actually get counted, and then we and then we find out. Um, you know, the big challenge for us has been, you know, down ballot uh, roll off. Uh, a lot of a lot of Democrats and folks on the left are are less confident about voting for people down ballot who they don't know and whose name they haven't heard. 
uh, whereas Republicans are real good soldiers and they just go zhunk, straight down, like all Republicans. And a lot of Democrats and, and unaffiliateds don't do that. And that's why really good candidates like Brianna often lose because people just, they undervote, right? They just leave it blank. So like, well, I don't know. And can I really trust this person with my vote? I don't know who this person is and I don't have time to research because it's the last weekend and I'm just so busy and you know, right. whatever. Life. Um, but we really need, we really need that. And we would have a much better world if we had all those, those lower level offices, those local, those county commissioner, county offices, uh, state leg state, you know, legislature, state senate, state house, um, and the, and the initiatives, like we just talked, you know, about X for like 10 minutes. Um, but a lot of people are going to leave that blank cause they're not going to know. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, but especially for those, for those lower offices, if we get, uh, a substantial boost in voting all the way down the ballot and, and I'm, I'm, I know it can sound, um, it can sound grating to some people when I say, I want you to vote a straight democratic ticket, but I really... I really I know so many of the candidates now, not just not just Brianna, but um, you know across uh, the front range. I've gotten to meet so many of them over the last year, and and uh, I'm impressed by almost every single one of them. And the more power we take here, the better things get incrementally. And then I also want to really encourage people learn about your municipal and your school board candidates next year, and then in 2020. Pay attention to the primary. Like, that's where we really have power. That's where you can ensure that a really strong pro-cannabis candidate wins in a primary against someone else who's maybe not super friendly, right? Or less inclined or, you know, more corporate inclined, right? Mm -hmm. That's where if we, you know, if we, um, you know, really show up, regardless of what our key issue is, that's where we have so much more power. And especially for especially for younger people, it's it's a, it's an amount of power that's usually left sitting on the table, but it's free. All you got to do is you know pick it up and use it. I just read today that only a third of millennials intend to vote this this election. Right, that makes me think of vote. of Carter Bard. We have a good friend of ours, and his Baird. wife is Baird. I say it mm -hmm. wrong every time. His wife is not from the United States, but she's mm -hmm. a, a citizen now, mm -hmm. and she is so excited. When it's time to vote and she can't wait to fill out her ballot and and it she takes such pride in it and we need to remember to feel that way you know we, we've taken this for granted yeah. this is our right and you know we need to be excited and, and mm -hmm. thankful you know like that that we have this opportunity and that's kind of why we wanted to do this show today and make sure i trev she wrote it in there on where to go and check yeah to go see. to uh because that's a lot of things they wait till just vote right. to find your polling location is that right. correct because so many yep. people wait oh i don't know where it is i guess i can't vote today wrong you could go <laughs> yep. just route. the key thing is do not mail your ballot uh you not cannot anymore. it's just too late in the game to know for sure that your ballot will be received by seven o'clock on the sixth oh so it's not it's not postmarked by it's received by and this is true especially if you've moved from another state the rules can be different um in some states, the rule is it just has to be postmarked mm. by seven o'clock on election day. In Colorado, it must be received by, and so and you have to drop it off at your polling place, or do you? Can you drop it? You off can at drop. The, it's best to drop it off in your county. In if your county. you can, you can drop it anywhere in the state, but then the counties have to transport the ballots across counties to each other. So you risk, you risk, you know, something happen in transport and whatever and. Adams County had 61,000 blank ballots stuck in a truck in a warehouse for a week. Uh, wow. You know, so they're they're late getting their stuff in because of because of this mess up by their uh, secretary, their their clerk and recorder, I should say. Hmm. Um, so the best thing is is find if you go to justvotecolorado.org, you put in your county and you can find all the places to vote in your county, and you can find the one closest to you. The drop boxes are all open 24 hours. They just it will stop at seven o'clock on November 6th. Um, you can vote in person if you didn't receive a ballot in the mail. Some people are registered to vote, but their registration is inactive because of some goof up, usually when they move and their address wasn't updated. And, mm -hmm. and you're still registered to vote, but if you didn't get a ballot in the mail, um, you can't, it's too late to, to get a ballot sent to you in the mail. But you can go to a voter service polling center, which you can find at justvotecolorado.org, and, uh, and and if you're and even if you're not registered, you can register same day and you can vote in person. 
If you're registered but you didn't receive a ballot, go to a voter service polling center. You can vote same day in person. Now, the only trick here is these typically have, you know, business hours. Um, so some of them are, are these early voting locations are open 9 to 5. Some of them are open 7 to 7 if they're a municipal building. Um, Saturday, this Saturday, they'll be open from either 7 or 8 in the morning until about noon. They will be closed on Sunday, and then they'll be open again uh, Monday and Tuesday. And there'll be some extra locations open on on Tuesday only for in-person voting. But you can register to vote all the way up through um, through Election Day. And the only requirement, I believe, is that you have to have been a resident of Colorado for a minimum of 22 days hmm. to uh, to do that. Um, all the all the the quest all the the answers to the questions are best answered by the Secretary of State's website. Which uh, the shortcut for that is govotecolorado.com. Govotecolorado.com. Right. If you have a question about eligibility or registration, that's govotecolorado.com. But in terms of where you vote in your county or getting a ballot from your county, that the best uh, resource there is that justvotecolorado.org. Okay. Justvotecolorado.org. Govotecolorado.com. Yep. Mm -hmm. And. Um, yeah. Do you know any jokes? Uh, yeah. Really? Well, yeah. I mean, everyone's worse at telling jokes when you're on the spot, but uh, that's why I do. Too. But there was, yeah. a, but there was a fun, there was a fun Halloween joke that I'll just repeat. Have you heard of the liquor store run by ghosts? No. They sell booze. <laughs> that's good. I like it. Mm -hmm. Tell it to my kid. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Silly. I'm gonna keep using that one. Yeah. Silly safe joke. This place was super haunted yesterday. I'll mm -hmm. tell you that. You guys should go watch that Halloween video, High Spirits Episode Three. Mm -hmm. I was, uh, I literally was up all night. Uh, what day is it today? Thursday. So Thursday, Tuesday night. Mm -hmm. I was up all night uh, trying to get a song together for when all the ghostly activity happened here. But that was fun, and mm -hmm. it's, uh, yeah. That so was now fun. we just need to get the song all together so we can just play it all the time. The. Six six three zero five zero seven. I'll tell you guys real quick. Uh oh. Uh oh. There we go. U.S. government has a patent on cannabinoids as neuroprotectants and antioxidants. Is patent number six six three zero five zero seven? Google it. Six six three zero five zero seven. In this Halloween special that he's talking yeah. about, he uh, put it to lyrics and yeah. did all the the playing all the instruments and even does. It's great. Yeah. It's, just, it's gonna it go fun. viral. Cool. I need to watch this. Yes, you do. Late, late tonight. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate you. Yeah, we thank understand. you. Yeah, well, thank, thank you so, you so much. much. This was a lot of fun. And, you know, we were going to have a group here, so I hope you didn't feel on the spot. Yeah, but, you it's all know, good. It's the way campaigns go right now. I'm glad you, you appreciated settling for me instead of Brianna. <laughs> no. Yeah. It would have been, it would have been great to have Jonathan, Brianna, and Phil all on the same, on the same thing. That would have been lively. Yeah, that would have been lively. But, you know. And the invitation's yeah. out there. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have to twist his arm too hard to go live. Okay. And you do so. this every Thursday? Every Thursday. Every Tuesday and except, Thursday. Except for Thanksgiving, probably. Yeah. Probably not might, Thanksgiving. Might take that one off. Might take yeah. it off. Yeah. But, um, yeah, we try to do it uh, Tuesdays and Thursdays and um, sometimes more. Mm -hmm. There's, uh, yeah, we'll start doing, I think there's going to be a third show coming up that we just do regularly. But we're kind of, you know, we got, we're in the habit now. Yeah. It's yeah, just kind of what I know it. that I do on Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tuesdays I got to wear a tie. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, you're right. It is more business oriented. Yeah, yeah. it's more business oriented. Yeah. Um, Michael Miller's on there, and he's mm -hmm. just phenomenal man. Um, knows quite a bit about the the industry as a whole, and I would call him a pioneer. You know, would be I'd call same. him all sorts of stuff. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Michael's awesome. Yeah, it's been. So it's, it's business cool. politics, you know, that sort of thing. Whereas our Thursday show is cannabis and any anything else. You know, right. we've had um, other companies on. We've had farmers, farmers knitters, on, knitter, or crocheters. crocheters. Yeah, sorry. Mm -hmm. I yeah. learned that on the show. All different kinds cool. of things. So it's just, you know, people in, in not necessarily even the cannabis industry wanting to, you mm -hmm. know, market to us. Yeah. 
I go. I want to do one more shout out. Uh, y'all know Jerry Shepard. Uh, yeah, well, Jerry's good a good friend of Greg and, and Terry's, and she's uh, a good friend of mine. Another Weld County uh, activist, uh-huh. and definitely pro cannabis, pro hemp. And she is an, uh, one of Colorado's elected DNC uh, committee people. Hmm. Um, a lot of people may, you know, have a, a negative impression of DNC members because of 2016. But it's key to know that we get to elect these people every four years, and we elected three uh, Bernie supporter progressives to our DNC committee uh, uh, slots in, in 2016. They're going to be up again in, in 2020. And so, you know, it was strictly by grassroots action that we got people who are more supportive of cannabis and hemp uh, to, to represent Colorado uh, as DNC members. And yeah. this all happens when people get involved in that, uh, that process and go to the state convention and know who these people are, and we're all part of. If we're all part of a community, then we get to, you know, decide that we want to have you know more progressive people who have, you know, more of these interests at heart and are more supportive uh, to to get elected to represent us on, on the Democratic National Committee. So, Jerry Shepard. Yeah. Well, Jerry cool. Shepard. Jerry Shepard. Yeah. Um. Well, thank you. You bet. Um. Yeah, this has been very informative. So. Brianna Titone, Colorado House District 27. Oh, and one more thing. Oh. oh. So if you want to meet Brianna, we're doing a happy hour uh, meet and greet uh, tomorrow. Friday is a perfect day for a happy hour meet and greet because we try not to call voters because they're really sick and tired of us on Friday night. They uh-huh. really want to do fun stuff. Uh, but we're going to be um, hanging out at the Tappet Tavern, which is on Old Wadsworth, south of Old Town, south of the tracks. So there's better parking. So if you are in Arvada, and or near Arvada and you want to come by and meet Brianna um, I might still be knocking doors but she'll be there at 530 and so come on by oh good you heard it here yeah cool well thanks for uh, thanks for watching and please go share it Brianna Titone Colorado House District 27 or 27 Mm -hmm. Phil Kelly Colorado Senate District 13 in Weld County and then as always Representative Jonathan Singer is a a strong advocate for patients and the plant and um, oh yeah and Sarah Swain for Kansas Attorney General that's right that's all I think that's about it this plant made me political after after not being political but Mm -hmm. um, it's changing us yeah. But cool. Whatever stirs your spirit. Guess we'll see you guys on uh, on Tuesday. Go watch the Halloween special too. In fact, I'm gonna. No, I'm not gonna show that. <laughs> Go watch it. That was so much work. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but um, yeah, thanks everybody. We'll see you, uh, Tuesday. <laughs>